you mentioned at the beginning, and I think it's really good advice that, you know, if you're a new person entering the digital forensics realm, that the employers are going to look at your research papers, they're going to see that you've taken ownership of a certain problem, and you've, you've solved it to the greatest of your abilities. And but beyond that, can you sort of talk about particular skill sets or experiences that people should be striving for if they want to do digital forensics, especially in a government or a federal sphere? Um, you know, apart from like just being dogged and being obsessed, like what 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 should people be looking to sort of get into to make themselves uh, appealing to employers? Um, I'm a so at the early stage of my career, uh, I was one of the individuals, and probably a horrible mistake that many of us do make that. I believe in this uh, superior technical abilities are the only way to go. Okay. Right, so it's a superior knowledge into it. Uh, later on in life, I realized that one of the reasons I was picked is that, never, never occurred to me, is that I'm one of the individuals that if you put me in a lot of pressure, I'm not going to break and I'm not going to cry. Unless you, Chris, going to play some really bad rap music, I'm not, I don't cry. Right? Right. But if, you, if you do that, that's, that's, that's right. So, but everyone has this breaking, I'm trying to tell you, everyone has this small breaking point right, right. that you can find. We all do. Just the question is how big is this breaking point that you have and what, what is really will create this um, scratch on your shoulder that you don't like about it. And it's very important even to balance mental, physical, and intellectual capabilities of the individual. You can have someone who is very strong technical, he is very strong anything, but it's very hard to work with them. Very hard to work with on a project, very hard to explain, um, can uh, perhaps uh, run, if you ask him to work 10 hours because you have to finish something, he can't, because after eight hours he gets into very unstable emotional state, um, or intellectually if you challenge him and you ask him to speed up, he starts making mistakes, right? So those are the qualities that if that work requires, then the person needs to have. Um, in the forensic science work, I guess you can, might have a two type of employment. One employment is that you're working for a consulting company and the work is coming in and out and you are not bugged by this momentum that you constantly work on different cases and the speed is very high, right? So you're becoming this, um, it would be like really flattering, like a Formula One driver every day, and you try not to crash and you try to win the race, right? But, but, but you're trying to do that so many times in a month, right? And you enjoy that. You enjoy that ride. Yet the same way you keep your mental and um, intellectual and physical balance at a shape. So, for example, I go running every morning, just 25 minutes, 30 minutes for three miles run. And this is my meditation moment with myself and you know, find myself and really stay energized for a day and stay healthy. And I think that's, that's very important. And everyone who wants to get into really in this career should think about that. It's not only about really being really good, but being a good team player, have a good intellectual skill set, how you approach individuals, um, being very mentally balanced in a society. So basically you are not a, a one of these awkward individuals that's just walking around and doesn't want to talk to anyone and you know, can't present himself. And then also build this mental stiffness. Mm -hmm. I right? really build this mental stiffness that if you need to put up with some serious load, right? it's not something you understand that that's a part of a job. Right. It's almost like imagine you go to the hospital and the orthopedic surgeon in the a, in a middle of the heart surgery says, well, I have enough. I'm going home. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, I can't take this anymore. I'm looking at all these hearts. Yeah, yeah, like in the middle of the surgery, right? So it doesn't happen, right? So yeah. those individuals pick those jobs, yes. And then you can envy what they have and you can envy what they get paid. The question is, would you want to have their job when that page goes on and you have to go there? Would you have a job and work 12 hour surgery on someone, right? With the people. Right. And in the fact that you know that if you make one mistake, the person can die. The good news is in forensics, it doesn't happen at that, uh, at that aggressive level. But what we see, for example, from ransomware, like, if you make an error in, let's say, in forensic investigation, um, things can go horribly wrong. Right, yeah. Uh, there is a good case right now of the large data center company being compromised. Mm -hmm. and there was a forensic firm who was pivoted in, very large forensic firm, who a little bit underestimated the threat actor. So for a month, when they were doing the containment and eradication and isolation of the host, this threat actor went from 10% compromised company at a data center close to 80% behind their back. 
And I told everyone that doesn't look very good when you're forensic from higher to basically that happens to. And uh, lesson learned here is you know don't underestimate the threat actors, right? Like yes, you you have to create a balance for yourself. But if they work in 24-7, you have to be 24-7 opponent. If they are snipers, you have to be a sniper. Yeah. New episodes of the Cyberwork Podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things cyberwork.